Hi, and we're on week six now of our journey of 52 Reason and Record Tips. And in this week's episode, I'm going to show you how to do multiband processing. Some time ago, I created a refill for Reason called the JB Multiband Toolbox, which you can download from this link if you're a registered Reason user. This week, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I created those multiband patches, the process to get the splits in Reason. Then we're going to bounce forward to record, and I'm going to show you what you can do with that technique in creating some advanced ways of multiband processing. For example, we're going to use the channel compressors on each one of the mixer channels with band splits to do compression, as opposed to the M-class compressors. And again, uh, since there's going to be some patching, a fair amount of it actually, my head's going to disappear one more time. See you in a bit. To begin, let's look at the basic process for creating a band splitter in Reason. I'm going to use an M-class stereo imager for all the frequency splitting. As you can see here, I have taken the output of the main mixer and connected it to an M-class stereo imager. To create a simple two-band split, just select the crossover frequency using the X over frequency knob. I'm going to leave it set to 787 hertz. When you press the solo high band or solo low band button, you're deciding what band comes out of the main audio outputs on the back of the imager. To get the audio output of the other band, which is going to be the high band in this case, just select it using the separate out selector switch. Now that band is coming out of these separate outs. Let's create a simple two band compressor. Create two M class compressors, holding down the shift key on your QWERTY keyboard so they do not automatically get routed, and connect the main outputs of the imager to the first compressor, which we will call low band comp. And the separate outs to the second compressor, which we will call high band comp. To have both of these compressors feed back into the hardware output as a stereo mix, we're going to need to use a Spider Audio Merger and Splitter as a merger. Connect the outputs of both of the compressors to the merger inputs, and then connect that merged output back up to the main hardware output of Reason. Easy as pie, right? But what if we wanted to make a 4-band, or even an 8-band, or 16-band compressor? Using the same 2-band compressor patch that we just made, let's split the bands even further. Create two more M-Class stereo imagers, again holding shift on the QWERTY keyboard. Disconnect the low-band output from the first compressor, and connect it to the third stereo imager's inputs, which we will call low-band 1 and 2. Do the same for the high band by connecting it to the fourth stereo imager, which we will call high band one and two as well. Now is where things get a little tricky. Since we decided that the original two band splitter cut the frequencies right at 787 hertz, we know that the low band only carries frequencies from 786 hertz and below and the high band carries frequencies from 787 hertz and above. Let's just cut the difference for each of the new imagers, setting the low band 1 and 2 to 340 hertz as its crossover, and the high band to 1.65 kilohertz as its crossover. Now following the same process of using the solo low band and using the separate outs set to high band, we will get frequency splits for each band of these values here. Connecting those to four separate compressors and the merger would look like this. To make this usable in any song, just pack the devices into a combinator like this and save your patch. Now you might be asking, why in the world would I do any of this? Well, simply put, multiband processing really allows you to scope your final mix and have the most control over dynamics of exact frequency ranges. Ever connected a compressor to the final mix and when the bass kicks in, 
it sounds like you've just lost all the high frequencies of your song, kind of like this. Yep, that's because you are not using a multi-band compressor. And anytime the level goes above the threshold that you've set, the compressor kicks in. And bass frequencies in particular carry a lot of sound pressure level. That's the basics of how you accomplish the splits. Of course, I suggest you dial in different values for the crossover frequency knobs to achieve the splits and sound that you want. Just remember to keep track of where your splits start and end so you can dial in the correct frequency settings for the additional bands you're going to use. I usually keep a pen and paper handy to jot things down because it tends to get a little tricky when you do especially more than four bands. In the multiband toolbox refill, I created a patch called 8-band parallel compression, which is also included in the mastering preset folder for both Reason 4 and Record. If you've never taken a look at it, here it is. That's some crazy amount of patching and routing. I know, I did it. I'm not going to go into detail about what parallel compression is right now since we do not have the time. Just do a Google search for parallel compression and you should come up with a bunch of info. But in a nutshell, it makes everything sound huge. Well, if I haven't fried enough of your brain cells yet, let's take a quick look at what I'm going to do in next week's episode. Here I have a record song which is using multiband compression, but instead of using the M class compressors like we just did, I'm actually using the channel compressors of record to get that SSL sound on the compressors. Since this example is going to take a little bit longer to explain, I'm going to save it for next week. But I will give you the song file to play around with in the meantime. The way it works is this. Load any audio track, preferably one that you've already mixed down and not mastered, into the track labeled Load Audio Track here. Now play around with the amount of compression on each mixer channel and see what results you get. Try muting or soloing some of those channels as well and you'll hear the frequency splits. And if you're really experimental and you want to stretch out, try adding an effect to each one of the aug sends on some of these channels, like maybe a reverb on the high channel or a delay on the mid channel and see what that sounds like. Woof. Lots of patching this week. Sorry about that. If you weren't able to follow along as quickly as I went, I've uploaded all of the patches and also the record song file to this link here. If you have any questions, send me an email and I'll answer your email to the best of my ability. Also, keep sending in those emails for future episodes and requests for those because I am reading them and jotting them down and you will start to see some of those requests in future episodes as well. Once again, James Bernard for Propellahead Software, and thanks for joining me on this journey, and I'll see you next week. Bye.